Tax Solutions Now is a complimentary referral service that connects callers to companies that provide tax services. Money matters. If you owe thousands in back taxes to the IRS, how much can Tax Solutions Now save you? I paid less than I owe. That's right. Money matters. So call Tax Solutions Now and get the IRS off your back. Since 2014, Tax Solutions Now has been a leader in the tax resolution industry. Remove wage garnishments, property liens, fines, and penalties. Qualify for the Fresh Start program or even uncollectible status. How much can Tax Solutions Now save you? I owed the IRS over $10,000. I paid a fraction of what I owed. Call now to reduce or even eliminate your back taxes. I called Tax Solutions Now and got the IRS off my back. Thanks. You saved us a ton of money. Money matters. How much can Tax Solutions Now save you? You call now and find out. Call 800 683 7377. 800 683 7377. 800 683 7377. The Turnpike Sports Book Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book available anywhere in New Jersey. BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you get a risk-free bet up to $300 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Okay, in this week's book report, we have a bunch of different things to talk about. We have some state tax records to talk about. Tax records, really? Wow. State okay. handle records. All right. We have a couple deals, and we have a discussion on the Bookie Butcher. The Bookie Butcher. Of Illinois. The Bookie Butcher of Illinois. <laughs> it's like a Sweeney Todd kind of <laughs> name Basically, to it. yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm waiting for the musical. Well, do you want to talk? Bookie Butcher, or do you want to save that for last? No, I save that for last. Tease it for last. All right, we'll talk taxes first. All right. Oh, that's a fun thing to talk about. Rhode Island has an, and Colorado both set state tax records. Really? Hey, congratulations, Colorado and Rhode Island. Hey, you love hey, Colorado. Uh, I love Colorado. It's great. Great that they're breaking records. But And you know what? It's great that they're breaking tax records because, you know what, that's why states allow sports betting to get to tax revenue. Well, they should be very happy about that because that's how Colorado got their state sports betting law passed because it was supposed to be the water tax relief. Oh, okay. They were supposed to go to their water problem over there, water pollution, water desalinization, whatever that plan was. The double D plan is what they called it before All right. when they passed it. Um they, they, Colorado, as a state, released their sports betting numbers, both tax and handle. They had a handle of $210.7 million in October. Now, th- that wasn't a record. That's not the record. That's not the record. Okay. The total taxes collected was $824,000. That's the taxes, not the revenue, from, not the hold and everything else from the books. Mm-hmm. They had 824000 in in tax collected. That was a 91.5% increase over the previous month of September. Okay. That's the record. That's the largest amount of tax money they've ever collected off sports betting in the state. So the total tax collected is $824,700, and that's the record. That's the record. Okay. Congratulations, that, Colorado. That's You have the revenue, you have the handle, the revenue, and then the tax revenue. The tax revenue is where the record came from. All right. Uh, and they actually even uh, talked about which sports did what. Pro football led October's uh, handle with uh, $67.9 million in wagers placed. All right. That's a record also for the most bets made in a month on one sport. Oh, okay. So a little record in there, too. No, okay. Yeah, no, Colorado's had a good month. Then followed after that was baseball and then NCAA football. Okay. Guess who was number four? Number four in yes. Colorado? Uh, what would we have? Football. We had baseball. What's the sport that doesn't seem to want to go away? That was just introduced in the pandemic. Are, okay. Are we talking ping pong? Yes. Really? Yes. St- they're still going strong with the table tennis. They I shouldn't call love it ping, ping pong. pong. Uh, I shouldn't call it ping pong because the, I guess the official term that they're using is table tennis. Boy, they're still sticking with it. Good for them. They must have a I'm, lot I'm of table tennis. I'm impressed. It's hanging there. around. I, I I can't believe that. I I think I bet on that. Once or twice in the spring, and I said, forget it. No, I don't know enough about it to do anything with it. 
But, but good, hey, good for Colorado. Apparently, there's a lot of table tennis fans out there. Good. Well, hey, you know, it, it's something to bet on, too. A lot of people just need the action, you know, and table tennis. Table, table tennis, tennis is really? <laughs> table tennis is kind of a quick game, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, I, the only time I've watched it was when I did bet on it and the the place where I bet on it, and I can't even remember where I bet on it, what book I bet on it, was uh, they had the the match streaming on their website, which was pretty cool. You know, you can bet on the website and it, they're streaming it. But uh, the camera angles were weird. And, I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like NBC or CBS or ESPN covering table tennis. It was a camera in the corner of a room, and they were hitting the ball back and forth. Can't so, be can't be any worse yeah. than darts streamed through a darts uh, was just yeah. Yeah, first off the way they streamed darts on the sports books was they had the picture of the dartboard and just the. <laughs> they didn't have the pictures of the people throwing the darts. They just had the picture of the dartboard and the darts hitting the board. Did they ever so. show the person throwing the dart? No, no. Or did no, they no, just throw the hand? Not the one I saw. They okay. could. Certain sports books could have that. But the sports book that I placed a bet on darts and that also streamed the dart event, they just had a picture of the dartboard and the darts hitting the board. They didn't have pictures of people throwing the darts. Well, you know what's fun to watch? If you ever get a chance, go to BBC America and watch their dart championship show. It, yeah, I, I that saw is that. So much fun! I saw that. It, it was nothing like that yes, on the streaming. And unfortunately, uh, no, it's not. It but, wasn't a highly produced, yeah. slickly produced kind of event. It was a picture of a dartboard with darts hitting the board. Well, you know, what? maybe the streaming. And you know, that could have been just grow. that event. You know, but it, it that's what I saw for darts. <laughs> well, now that we've explored the table tennis and dart tangent, yeah. uh, Rhode Island reported a handle of $34.7 million in October, up 22.6% from last year of Octo- October of last year. Handle was also up 10%, maybe almost 11% compared to September of this year. Total revenue reached $4.4 million, up from... Uh, 2.4 generated in September and up 76% of October of last year. Uh, mobile. This is where the record comes in, by the way. Oh, the mobile. Okay. Yes. Rhode uh, Island is for the mobile yes. part of it. Okay. Exactly. Mobile mobile uh, sports betting generated a record of $2.8 million and $2.2 million in revenue. <laughs> I'm, I'm misreading my notes here. I'm so excited about Rhode Island sports betting. $2 million in revenue, up 133.6%. From September. Wow. Boy. That's a huge jump in revenue. What's going on in Rhode Island? I guess it was all the, uh, what is that, New England Patriot money kind of? I guess That's so. what they're betting on, New England Patriots? Retail still was out out uh, pacing the mobile until they were closed. Yeah. Um, I guess they're closed now. They closed Now, the do they still have that rule where you have no, to- No, they dropped it. They dropped it? Well, what I was talking about was- they used to have a rule, and I'm, I'm sure maybe they just suspended it, that if you signed up online for an online sports book, you have to finish your registration at the physical retail sports book. So I guess they... As far as I know, suspended. it was removed from the books. Oh, okay. They're not going back to it. Okay. Well, they shouldn't. It's, yeah. it's a weird and rule. Retail brought in $19.3 million in handle. Mobile brought in $15.4 million in handle. So it was almost evenly split, maybe 60-40 okay. in terms of retail. Going over to the uh, state handle records, we have Oregon. They had record months in terms of their handle in September and October. October sports betting handle was twenty nine point four million, with uh, almost two point eight million as the win for the sports books. Wow, great! So they had a good couple of months there. People are still not happy with the app. You know, it's that scoreboard app run by Intralot. Right. There's still you know some complaints out there about it. Well, they're working at the bugs. It's uh, it's a still a new endeavor. So give them some time. And they had almost a 10% hold. Great. Natural wow. hold. Wow. It's not required like Tennessee. Uh, they also had the n- number of bets placed in October was almost 904,000 bets. Ooh, Ooh. wow. So okay. people are starting to get used to the sports betting in uh, in uh, Oregon. So we'll see what happens there, especially once they start opening it up to other uh, entities to do sports betting. Okay. Uh, New Hampshire had a record handle. Of $47 million. Well, all the records, huh? Yeah. Mo- well, actually, that's mobile two, and retail together. Two New England states have set records, yeah. Rhode Island and New Hampshire. I mean, they're not like the, the gobs of money coming in, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Indiana, but they're getting up there. 
Well, it just popula- for them, for well, them are. Yeah. population size. You know, it's it's great for the the population size. DraftKings, which is the only mobile sports book in the state, had eighty five percent of that handle. Let me tell you something. New Hampshire has it made up there because you know there's no other state that has sports betting up there. Maine no. doesn't have it. Massachusetts doesn't have it. Vermont doesn't have it. I mean, if you want to throw some bets down on a sporting event, you have to go to New Hampshire. Yeah. And revenue of $2 million compared to $2.2 million, which was July, August, and September combined. Hmm. So they actually equaled three months' worth of revenue in one month. All right. Now let's get to the uh, highlight of the book report, the oh, Bookie the, Butcher of Illinois. The Bookie Butcher of now, Illinois. I have in my notes, and I'm going to put it up on the blog, too, um, a lot of the AP report, word for word, because it was easier to read it this way. It's kind of an interesting story. Uh, it's a local northern Illinois butcher. He pleaded guilty to operating a sports betting business and failing to, re- to report his proceeds to the IRS. Okay. He was sentenced to one year in prison, prison last week. Wow. Boy, that's uh, one year in prison, huh? Yeah. I would think like probation or a fine or, boy... I guess the volume of business he was doing? We're talking $3.7 million yep, that'll, over five years. That'll get you into prison. Yep. Uh, he uh, he was, uh, let's see, I want to get this correct here. Allegedly, he was running a uh, the sports betting business out of his butcher house, butcher shop, whatever you call those things. Okay. Um, and he, he was paying about $50,000 worth of taxes. You know, he was making ten thousand, fifty thousand in taxable income, paid about seven thousand a year in income tax. Well, I'm sure he didn't put sports betting on no. his. Uh, <laughs> the according according to the whatever district, tax form, according to the district attorney, in one year, one of these years, he reported he had less than twelve thousand dollar income, yet bought a one point five million dollar home in Highland Park, Illinois. He probably don't want to do that. No, you, you know? he probably got a little carried away with that stuff. Yeah. But uh, he was he, it was such a betting operation from what I was reading in the reports that he was collecting the bets at his shop. He was going to customers' homes to get the money. He was also picking them up in drop areas in public that were designated. Oh, okay. He had a quite a business plan he had. Yeah, he wow. actually had one customer, according to all the reports I'm reading, that they were leaving checks with the doorman of his place, of his apartment where he lived, and the date and the checks were undated. So whenever he wanted to cash him, he just wrote the date in and cashed them himself because they were losing that much money to him. Wow, it was that organized. I I got to be honest with you. If you're going to do this illegal betting, why would you take checks? Why would you have some, something in writing of any kind? You know, it just it just you. I take back what I said. He had a business plan. No, he had no business plan if you're no. doing checks. But he had business sense to do it. So, uh, Well, hey, one of the things he that... He had business make, sense, he wouldn't be accepting checks. One of the problem areas where for him that caused probably all this was one of his gambling uh, customers yep. gambled away his business. Oh, and okay. his family was all upset about it. So maybe there was a report made that may have started the ball rolling on this. Sure, sure. So, but Absolutely. He got sentenced to one year... Uh, he must report to prison on May 29th because of COVID. Okay, so it's a delayed, delayed prison, prison sentence. A sentence because of COVID. Huh? Yes, and he apologized to the court. Well, good, good. I mean, he got caught, so he apologized. But that's it for the Bookie Butcher of Illinois. Start your you know folklore and folk tales going right now with this guy. Yeah, I know. It's folk the, songs, too. Yeah, the, you know, it's the Sweeney Todd, the there you go. <laughs> butcher Barber. So... Uh, but, uh, hey, uh, that'll do it for us this week. If you're uh, going out to one of the newly reopened casinos and sportsbooks, please be safe. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.